Welcome to the NZ Nomad Runner podcast. I'm Chris Lucas. And I'm Charlotte Moan. We are run coaches at CMF Running, where we help runners and athletes of all abilities train to any surface, any distance races. Today we're talking about uh, my experience training and running my first 100 miler. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day, 2020. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's not that long ago, actually. It feels like a long time ago because... It's that pre-COVID thing. Well, there's just a, uh, so many things about um, it's just, your first first just mile. pre-COVID. But also, we were like um, maybe six months together. Um, and here we are, like, you know, five years down the track. Um, and so much has happened, like, with our lives. Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tune in for the podcast about that. <laughs> We actually yeah. are wanting to do like a podcast about like um, us um, as yeah. a couple. And... Us and CMF running and our stories. Well, there's a few podcasts in that, yeah. isn't there? There's one we want to do on our kind of our sobriety story, actually, as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? We want to do one on our, like our sobriety stories and us, um, yeah, it's part of our story together. And then we want to do one about CMF running and how that's kind of coming about. And it's all kind of very intertwined, isn't it? Yeah, and I feel like there was another one as well. I think maybe it was Bus Life. Um, oh, yes, that is yeah. the third one. So the yeah. third one we, we want to do, people ask us about um, Bus Life. Like, how, how is it Bus Life? Because we've now been living Bus Life for like five years too, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, a lot of learnings, eh, and all that. And um, we love, I love the Bus Life. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The more we do it, the more I love it, actually. And that, that is very true. Yeah. Um, so tune in for that one another but, time. And always feel free to hit us up with uh, any training questions um, and podcast topics. Right now we're getting into our Tarawera series for the most part, hence um, today's topic. Um, so, yeah, feel free to hit us up with any Tarawera-specific stuff too. And this is where this one came from, actually. It came from the Run Aotearoa group and from sharing our last one, which was our last one that we put in there last week. can't remember. Oh my gosh. If there was only one week ago, we put a Tarawera, a Tarawera um, podcast dropped into the, oh my God, I can't remember, can't believe we've forgotten what it is. No, it was uh, 12 weeks to Tarawera, what you kind of want to be thinking about and um, mentally and what your training should look like 12 weeks out from Tarawera. So check that out on the channel. Um, as well it's like what to expect experience uh series so yeah. we're this podcast uh partly why we're doing it is because um yeah someone asked and run aotearoa um is a, an amateur uh, runner you know what is what are some of the things to expect you know doing tarawera miler yeah. so hopefully by sharing the story um like yeah chris chris's first miler i um a crude and paste as well so i'll bring in that slight um, yes so we have slight, both sides yeah slight aspect and how it could be a you know a relationship bonding exercise or um a make you know, or a breaker make or a breaker you know you could be you could be six months into a relationship and five years down the track and getting stronger yeah or yeah, it yeah. could be like nah um yeah and you were there for like all the training as well like you know in yeah. various you know various forms I was loving the, it. Of the big runs and the big missions as well. So, yeah, thanks for that uh, suggestion, person on the Run Aotearoa group. I can't remember his name. And I'm definitely an amateur runner um, in terms of uh, what the question was. I mean, yeah, it is. Often we see, hear these things from these elite, these things on uh, YouTube and whatnot about, uh, yeah, you know, training for these races. And it's from an elite kind of or sub elite kind of perspective. And um, yeah, I think it's good to hear, hear um, what, what that's like. Yeah, I guess for the context of this, I am a sub twenty four hour miler. I've done a couple of hundred I've done a couple of hundred milers. Both mm-hmm. of them have been sub twenty four. So my first miler was uh twenty three fifty three. Um in that twenty twenty, the one we're talking about today. And uh did one this year, earlier this year at Faultline Ultra, and that was a twenty three thirty something. Um harder course, more elevation, better time. So that was cool. Yeah. Progressing. Nice. So I'm kind of like that mid pack front front of mid pack sort of a runner, yeah. Just for context. Yes, I think um, I actually looked up. Uh, side note, I actually looked up what amateur meant. Um, oh yeah, what does it mean? Well, I can't remember word for word, but it it, make, it means like someone that it's like it's not. It's like their um, maybe it's a bit more than their hobby, and they're not like it's not their profession or they're like 
it's kind of like the tear down from elite really like you're it's a it's a pursuit. Well, sub-elite. Yeah, yeah. a couple of tears down yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah a couple yeah. of tears down like it's something that you um uh you know are, are decent at for yourself and yes. you take it like yes. you know somewhat seriously but you yeah. know you're not you're not sub elite or elite um in yeah. terms of your performance or even in terms of your lifestyle so you may you may not be like yeah you're, we're still holding down full-time jobs. yeah it's not your sole vocation <laughs> um you know and, yeah that's uh, good yeah 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 that's cool eh? it's a good place to be for your like first first miler um uh you know having had you know, a bit of experience um you know running and training and doing races and doing long distance um it makes for you know i think it's almost like it's more um less for granted actually um by you know maybe waiting a little bit um mm. Yes, because I'd been running many years prior to doing this miler, although I had only done my first 100K one year before. So a lot of years of running in my life, you know, sometimes on and off at different periods, um, marathons, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then finally did my first 100K the year before. And that was also at Tarawera. So I kind of, yeah, it's a... Yeah, interesting, kind of a typical kind of a journey that you hear that, that folks have to their first 100 miler. Not the bolter, not the started running a year ago and here I am doing a 100 miler. Yeah, for sure. Like you didn't get you didn't get to that sub 24 hours by running, you know, for even two years. So, um, yes. And on top of my running as well in my life, I've done a lot of stuff on my feet, which mm-hmm. counts for a lot in the miler realm. So if you've done a lot of things on your feet, like in your work, perhaps Mm -hmm. you're uh, someone that's on your feet all day in your job, or you've done a lot of hiking in your life. Um, That was kind of my story um, prior. Then, yeah, that does count for a lot in the mile. And I've seen that with others. I've seen that with other like um, endurance athletes come through, folks that do particularly well. Yeah, farmers, gardeners, roofers. I was uh, a milk. I did the milk um, trucks. So in and out of the milk trucks, lifting tons of milk every day mm. on your feet, 10 hours, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And even like, um, like I, prior to doing this, I was, um, I, I worked in supermarkets quite a bit, um, in like, you know, grocery and produce. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that that is going to help me when I do my like first miler as well, because mm. it's just like that sort of, you're on your feet like all day. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's, it's doesn't, you know, it's yeah. good. It's good to have it's, a bit of lifetime of fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and so yeah, that's a nice thing to mention as well, actually. So folks think that we're running. So Tarawera is, is you know, a, a runnable course. But I reckon for my first miler at Tarawera, I hiked 50% of it, even though I did under 24 hours. So I basically walked, power hiked, um, anything that resembled a hill. So even slight ups, even slight ups, I would start to power hike. And so I basically, my strategy um, was to, yeah, I was running the flats and the downs. Yeah, I think. Um, Jogging. Yeah. You kind of have to remember that like your 100, like 100 mile pace is slower than your 100k pace. Yes. Um, and it's even though they're both long ways, um, yeah. <laughs> it's a long way, both of both of them. There is obviously a, a difference in terms of your pace. And um, yeah, it's a totally different approach, isn't it? Yeah, and I think because of like the intensity comes from you know the longer duration and and where you kind of lose more time isn't when you're um, not running and walking it's when you're stationary at aid stations yes. or like you know um, held over on the on the side of the track having a moment but mainly obviously like in aid stations when you're taking you know a bit longer than you should be. Um, totally. And how often do we see this? So as coaches working full time with runners and coaching all types as well. Much better, we coach, you know, some sub-elite folks as well, right back to the rear packers. And um, how often do we see when we go on courses on these weekends at Tarawera and things to spectate and support, uh, how often do we see folks sitting at aid stations, like in the back end of the race, like Blue Lake, and you're just camped out, literally not able to get out of there, like in a timely sort of manner? Because uh, you've gone too fast earlier on. Uh, ultimate, in most cases, uh, that is what's happened. The individual has gone too fast or too too hard earlier on. Perhaps they've just tried to run up too many of those hills, and they've essentially like just totally tapped themselves out. Often it's GI distress. Yeah. GI distress is a, a result of pushing too hard. Often, um, you know, dehydration is a result of pushing too hard too much through the day. 
um yeah all that kind of stuff yeah i just thought about like a and I don't know if you can remember. I think I vaguely remember, but I could be wrong. Like, what was your stoppage time in the Milo? I, I think it was like an hour, hour and a half. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You it was pretty good. Mm. It was pretty good. I'd have to compare it to a fault line. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it improved. But, yeah, an hour and a half, I remember us looking and comparing um, because we had a bit of a crew, a cool thing that we can touch on that as well. We had a bit of a crew together uh, for my first miler. Uh, we were based in Rotorua at the time. Um, and so there was a big bunch of us in Rotorua um, that particular year, stepping up for the miler. And so after the race, I was like, oh, yeah, I wonder how much, how long other people, how long did my peers, you know, um, stop for in their day? And, yeah, it was pretty good. You are pretty speedy through the aid stations. Um, you know, yeah, you, um, you don't muck around. Which, you know, is good. So, yeah, all about bringing that. Ultimately, it's all about bringing that average pace down and continual forward motion is what's going to get you to the finish line faster. And so, yeah, all about, yeah, just that. It's so different approach to 100Ks. You're not doing 100K pace for 100 miles. It's not a magic trick like that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the 60Ks is almost, almost as long as the first 100Ks. Oh, totally. Yeah. It often is. Yeah, it often, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, more or less, like, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, it often is. Mm. Sometimes longer even for some folks, I would suspect. Yeah, mm. this depends on how, how hard you went out. And, um, yeah, it's the, the stoppage of aid stations, obviously there's, like, a fine line, like, between, you know, being too quick. Um, Chris almost could be too quick, actually. Yeah, I um, did make that mistake um, in fault line earlier this year. I, a one particular age station, a 130k age station, I was a bit too quick and I could have done with just sitting for five more minutes and having a cup of tea and some broth or something. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, shall um, we rewind the clock to November? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Blue, November blue, 2019. Blue Lake, blue Lake even. Oh, yeah. Blue Lake 2019. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, again, if you listened to or you listened to our podcast we did last week we we're sort of talking about that thing of um it's very easy to do too much too early when you're training for a miler it's very easy and i made this mistake yeah i can i can um i can imagine this um speaking from someone who has has not um run a hundred miles yet um but also and but obviously been around it since 2020 um you know when you by an entry to a race, um, you could be like six, you know, to a mile, it could be like six, six to eight months. Yeah, I think you, yeah. I remember you saying. It was like July you, or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. That is a typical like lead yeah. in, I reckon, for someone's first miler. It's that sort of six to eight months out or six to nine months out. They're kind of like, yep, I'm doing this. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. but that doesn't mean like that your training intensity load is like yeah, super it's not, high. It's not miler training from that. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's one of the mental traps that um, folks fall into that are self. It's exciting. eh? Like it's exciting doing a miler. Like I'm, I'm doing fault line miler, like in in april next year and like i'm excited like i'm you know and so you know it's not even that far away from it so i'm of course like you're going to be getting excited about training and and you know feeling super fit is exciting yeah it's a good feeling feeling super fit and you kind of like want to get there because you've probably been there before like maybe with your 100k training um and you're like let's go (laughs) yeah 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 no yeah and so i did um a bit of a block before yeah i was doing quite a bit in july in august with the blue lake kind of leader oh, yes that was- and then i did 70 odd k's at blue lake or nine ish hours can't remember i kind of vaguely or... remember you doing 80 k's for some reason 70 or 80 k's at blue lake nine ish hours and then i sort of did that thing of continuing on from blue lake what i should have done in retrospect I had some help, by the way, with my first one, which I'm very grateful for at the time. Um, but it, so I had a ready-to-go plan off a coach friend of mine and a bit of like guidance along the way. So not full-on coaching, but yeah, ready-to-go plan and a bit of guidance. Um, but so having said that, um, you know, I made my own decisions on some things and uh, as you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. As I, as I did. So um yeah, definitely did that thing of doing Blue Lake end of September and then just not having enough down period after that and 
just kind of pushed into October in November. Like, yeah, just kind of pushed through. Um, and we were looking. In my last eight weeks of training prior to Tarawera itself, I only did three quality outings, like, you know, that sort of six, eight-hour stuff mm. or plus five-hour stuff. In the last eight weeks of training, only three big outings. And But it, it was also a couple of races in there that were short or high intensity, which probably one could have been all right, but not two. You were pretty cooked after a Tussock 32K. You made it yeah, and that it. was only like two or three weeks before the race. Yeah, that was, that was a hot year, though. There was like a lot of... Um, there was a lot of like fast people mm. um, from Rotorua down there that year um, for that race. So I think, you know, sometimes that kind of environment obviously does uh, bring the competitiveness out on you. Um, That's the danger actually with doing a shorter, faster race too close to something big, even if you're like going in with the mindset of like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to take it easier and all that. Like, do we really? Like, mm. you know, do we really? Like it had to be pretty like a seasoned campaigner, I think, to really have the um, self control to and the wisdom, I think, to um, be like, "Yep, no, nah, I'm just cruising this one," you know. So yeah, I did that thing of just too much, too early. The quality wasn't in the right place. But having said that, enough to store, get it done on the day. Yeah, I think also like um, what was also kind of funny about that year, maybe personally, it was like we were like a really new couple. Um, and we went on this like holiday for like three three weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, down down in Tongariro, um, and I, I remember doing like quite a few missions down there. And then you had like this awesome group of um, fellow runners that year as well. So there was just like this sort of perfect mixture um, of um, of circumstances yeah. that allowed you know, for, for excitement of training and, um, and, and your, your new one and inexperience and all that kind of um, normal stuff as well. Um, and yeah, so it just, it just which happened. Re- yeah. Yeah. Which really helps say eh? like, that's one thing I can recommend, like, um, and we, we try and get, get that happening, like with our crew, eh, that we coach and it's just nice. Um, if you have a, you know, a little mob of folks training towards the same like particular race and um because then you can like link up for like these big missions and you know you're messaging each other or you're having a training weekend together and um you know you're there's that sharing like "Mm, what sort of food are you having yeah you know it's just all that thing you're on this journey and then you're lining up there on race day yourself and uh, so yeah 2020 definitely had that vibe like we had that crew uh rotorua tim sue myself anna anna and the myla we were very similar we were similar, very similar runners too. Um, I feel like there was a couple more. But yeah, yeah, it was just so cool. Yeah, doing missions um, with all those folks and then being on the start line and then the other, and then you're hearing about each other like on race day. Oh, you know, when you, as you're going through the course, you're like, how's so and so doing it? You know, I think Ash was doing it that year as oh, well. Ash as well, yeah. Um, yeah. And so this year, um, I am doing Tarawera 100 Mile again. And this year has a similar feel to it, actually. There seems to be like this bit of, reu- it's like the re- reunion tour. <laughs> There's uh, some old faces, um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of prior Tarawera 100 miler finishes coming back this year, giving another, having another run there. Yeah, a lot of uh, my one-on-one athletes that I coach um, lining up as well. So it's yeah. going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, it just it feels like there's a big crew coming together this year, so it's going to have a real special vibe to it as well. Yeah, well, I suppose, I, I don't know, it could just be a coincidence, but, um, you know, like because of the course and the nature of the course this year, it's been like obviously it looks like a really good course, you know, for the first time since um, Eastern, Eastern Okotona, Okotona has been closed. So maybe that, you know, that kind of thing makes it and brings people together, which is super exciting. That's definitely piqued my interest. Yeah, yeah. got you there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. as a coach, I mean, I want to see it as a runner as well. I want to see the new bits that I haven't run on. Um, but yeah, as a coach, I want to, you know, see it so I can help my runners in yeah. the years to come. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I know that bit. Cool. Ran it. Um, you're jumping all over the place here. Um, but anyway, back, back to... Um, 2020 start line yeah we there or like any particular missions group runs and missions that we did that uh stand out for you well i feel like um that one that you did it's not a but it's round there uh yes 
Oh, man, can't remember off the top of um, my head. It's like Motu, Motu Trail. It's the Motu Trail, yeah. But from the inland, inland yeah. not from um, yeah. Port- Inland Port-a-key. from what, the Portuguese bit. Um, yeah, that was a good one. That was about a 70K, 80 shower. Yeah, you because know, I did 50Ks and you mm. guys were ahead of me. And so this is a, here's some good stories about this one, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> because I say, and that's the thing, that was actually one of the long, that was one of the quality quality ones that it did in January. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. And um, I was cooked like the last few hours of that run. Right. And so it was just that thing of like had so much fatigue there. And um, then I got sick yes. afterwards. I got food, whatever, poisoning, you know. I think it was quite close to your birthday as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember you being quite sick on your birthday. Yeah. And I had to go get you because you were like addicted. No, addicted. You were really into um, uh, like iced chocolates. Yeah. Um, so I went and got you one of those for your birthday. Ultra nice. food. Yeah. Ultra drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just speaks to, you know, where I was was at, you know, just, yeah, just, that's, that's, the, that's what happens, you know? I, uh, yeah, I, um, in, in terms of other, other um, missions, I just, we're in an office that we've got down in Kim's and I've started putting some photos in the wall. It's the new CMF headquarters. Yes. Good, big announcement. Yeah, we've Chris's got, bib. We've got one thing in there. a decorated backdrop. More to come. Yes. Get excited. Yes, yes. yes. Um, another one that was in the rain, it was like a, a marathon, um, uh, yes. over Western Okatina. Yes. We did it out and back, didn't we? From Lake Okaraka. Yes. Over to Western Okatina, no, over the Western Okatina to the lake and then back over. Yep. In the rain. Yeah. And then we went and got dumplings afterwards. Yes. And went to the hot pools as well, actually. Yes. yes. Yep. These are the things. Yeah. And I think like one more is like we were in, um, it's a bit it's a bit blurred but you know that when we were in uh, Tomorero together um there was a few like there's a photo on the wall over here um that's I think it was like from the sort of like the start of you know like oh, the, yes, the, yes. the 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 tussock or the rough like 50k when you go in into the uh, yes, trail yes yes um, we, we did, did the round the mountain trail out and back yeah 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 that was cool yeah and then there was one more, one more. It's a it's a funny time, um, I guess. I remember there was one more that was with like Anna and Sue and, um, gosh, a lot of other runners. I can't remember everyone's names, but it, we sort of finished at ten o'clock at night, and we finished at Sue's house. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That was uh, a big. That was a big one. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been around New Year's or something. I think you must have done like sixty odd k's because I think I you picked me up um in like I always get this right name wrong like Okatina mm-hmm. um and you had really had run a bit um uh, yes yes and you ran down. into town yeah I think there's just there's just so many so many run stories so yeah start line race day what was it like Chris was listening to his headphones he was in the zone um uh, ryan ryan d martin was there yeah ryan my friend crewed me um and you crewed as well you crewed and then you paced yeah it was it was a day like i was so green green to it all like i didn't even know that um sort of ultra running existed until i met chris like in the september prior um (laughs) and here i was crewing and pacing you um for it so that was fun amazing yeah yeah Race week, a couple of days before. What was I like? Do you remember? I know race day eve. I was like pretty like stressed. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, you're just like, have I got everything? You know, and, yes. uh, yeah, yeah you just like quite stressed. And um, yeah, but yeah, it's that thing. Uh, you're like, oh, I gotta put the drop bags. Da, 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 you know, have I got enough food? You know, is oh my, my food God. sorted? You know, yeah. have like... I got enough of everything? And you just end up so. <laughs> You just end up with so much leftover food, eh? Like, man, it's crazy. For my second mile of the fault line this year, it was perfect. Like, but the first one was ridiculous. This massive chili burn, like, full of stuff, and, yeah. like, half of it was left at the end. Yeah, you probably had, like, heaps of gels. Yeah, um, yeah. You bought, like, you were really into cinnamon scrolls. You bought a lot of them. And I remember, oh, it's a funny story. We were jumping ahead 20, 120Ks in. But um, remember you carried that cinnamon scroll yeah. for like 40Ks or something? More. 
60 or 80 k's. I had a cinnamon bun in my back pocket. In the TA shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe as a maybe as a crew person these days, I would have spotted it back then. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even notice. Back then, it was just there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, like sleep, I don't know, a few hours sleep, four hours. It's a t- tough one, eh? Because, you know, 4 a.m. to pull you, that was the start then, it's the start now as well. And um, so you are, you're getting up early. Even if you're near the start line, you are still getting up at, like, I think we got up at 2.45 or something. Are you getting up early, eh? But it's kind of okay, you know, like this is, um, you know, hopefully you've got some good sleeps in like earlier in the week um, and you know that you're going to get up early and like your body isn't, I like to think your body isn't that fickle, um, you know, it, your body knows that you're going to be doing this really outrageous thing um, yeah. and so it can survive off, you know, like maybe because it survive off four hours or whatever it is, because it's impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it's like unlikely that you will go to sleep at eight o'clock suddenly after, you know, your traditional sort of sleep time is 11 or 1030. Like it's, it's like when you're a child and your parents put you into bed and it's still light outside. Like oh, yeah, yeah. you can't necessarily go to sleep. You can relax and like, yeah, relaxing is good. Yeah. 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 There is, yeah, I'd say if you're able to just go to sleep at 8 o'clock you know, to get up at 2.30 or whatever it is for your mile and you're able to do that, then you're a legend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for the most part, yeah, me definitely not and yeah, our runners that we coach as well don't often see many folks that are able to do that. Yeah, and it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah that is the thing, eh? just relaxing, relaxing is cool. Yeah. So, yeah, um, what was it like getting up in the morning, had some porridge, yeah, down to the start line, and, um, yeah, away we go. And then he's at, you know, I hadn't seen him. The first time I saw him, I guess, was at the 33K mark. Yeah. I just remember, like, the first 30-odd Ks, you're just sort of just, you're just sort of feeling out the day. You're just kind of getting into it. Um, yeah, you're just... Yeah, and the pre-start line as well. You're just like, man, what am you know? What am I about to do? You know, <laughs> you know, because there's that thing of when you're coming into your first mile, right? Eh? You just you're just sort of trying to wrap your head around the distance, and you know, your head, you know, if I, have I done enough? And there's all these kind of thoughts that, that go on, and and so I think I remember the pre-start line was very, I was very quiet. I think it was very contemplating mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And you're just kind of like, yeah, you're just in the zone, and you just want to get started, actually. And um, it kind of feels what the first 20, it feels like the first 25 Ks or something was just like that. You're just kind of like settling into mm. like some kind of rhythm and cruising. There wasn't a lot of talking. I remember in the field, like people weren't really talking too much. Uh, everyone was just kind of like doing their thing. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess some people are talking, but yeah, not, not me. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, you sort of start getting into it. And then, um, yeah, the, there's that road section coming down into Blue Lake. I mean, not Blue Lake, um, Buried Village mm-hmm. Age Station, which is about the 30, I think it was the 33 ish K mark, um, that year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you just kind of get trotting along. And, um, yeah, Anna overtook me there. That was the first, first of a few passes with right, me, yeah. me and Anna. Um, I'm a bit quicker on the hills than than her, and she was like quicker on the the fast runnable like stuff, like flat or you know. And uh, yep, so she burned past me on the road section, like going down to Buried Village. Um, yep, then saw you at Buried Village, and you got a funny Buried Village story, don't you? Well, I I just yeah, where do I where do I start? I like actually couldn't because I'm I was a newbie and just I was actually running off adrenaline a lot. Um, and like, I didn't, I found it really hard to actually find the aid station first off. Like I was driving up and down the street and then like, it was just, yeah, it was just, I was just a bit anxious, but yeah, I, I did, I did find it and I was waiting there. And I think it's just the anticipation of like, you know, is he going to make it basically? Or just like, am I going to miss him actually? It's always, am I going to miss, mm, you know, and it's part of. That is a thing for crew. Yeah. But anyway, and then, yeah. Um, and yeah, anyway, we made it, made it there, and then yeah, there was just this, this lady on 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 a microphone, um, and I just remember you coming into the aid station, and then because I had told her the stuff like we'd only been like together for like six months, and then um, you know just being an anxious self, and then she decided to share it like with everyone, with everyone on, on the, the microphone. microphone, and I was mortified. 
And I was like, Chris is going to hate not like this because um, I kind of knew, yeah, kind of knew knew that that wouldn't be a good thing, having that much tension on you. Um, and, yeah, both of us really actually, I don't put myself in that, don't need that much attention. So that kind of happened. Yeah, that was a funny story, yeah. I just kind of blocked her out and just pretended it like, yeah, I didn't even acknowledge because I just was like, what a, you know. I what do I need right now? Da, da, da. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember what you even needed at that age station because yeah, I was yeah. just, um, just yeah. too like mortified, <laughs> just not my thing. But we got it done. We got we it did. done. And then um, it was cool. Mm. I think I had I had like a chocolate. I had a bit of a mocha drink. That's right. Yeah, so I had one of my like yeah little mocha coffee caffeine drinks. Yeah. I suppose that's it's like, had, yeah. like like breakfast time really. Yeah, yeah, it's at nine eight nine thirty or something, wasn't it? Probably. Yeah, and then that's a quick one, uneventful, in and out. Yes. It's early days. Yes. And then you're on to the Tarawera Trail out to uh, towards the Isthmus Aid Station, which is about seventeen k's from memory. And yeah, what happened on this one? So I think this section had another kind of in a similar fashion to the first part of the course. It sort of had another sort of nothing or business as usual kind of a feel to it. It just kind of, yeah, it still felt, I mean, it is, you're early. It is still early in the race. And, um, yeah, I think I had that sort of sense as well, even in fault line, you know, 30, 40 Ks. And you're still early. You're still kind of almost getting into the day. And so I just, yeah, I think I think that's important as a tip to anyone. You're just, you know, you're just focusing on your processes. You know, maybe you're, you're paying attention to heart rate. That's what I was doing quite a lot. I mm-hmm. had heart rate guidance, um, and so I was just following that um, sort of thing, tuning into my body, making sure I'm fueling. And so, yeah, that section from Buried Village to Isthmus just really had, yeah, that sort of um, business as usual kind of feel about it. Uh, yeah, caught up to Anna. So, mm-hmm. again, I mean, we were together. Um, yeah, saw, saw some other runners. Saw Ash there. And, um, yeah, me and Anna pretty much stayed together on that the second half of that section and uh, and then into the isthmus aid station and as we were running down to the isthmus aid station to get the boat ride the boat was just had just left and so normally back then i presume it's probably the same still there's like two boats you know they're just kind of going like this um so it's not not a long wait but that particular year the one of the other boats had broken down um at that particular time and so there was just one boat and we had just missed it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. So that was the first like little hiccup in the day. And so it was about a good like 15 minute wait, like for that boat, 10, 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 15 is a bit of an exaggeration, but um, yeah, definitely a good 10 to 15 minutes um, wait. And, um, yeah. So yeah, we didn't let it like bother us too much. It's one of those things like you can't control. We were both like had a pretty good, um, yeah, attitude towards it. Um, I think nothing we could do about it. We just took the rest, you know, and like thought about like, okay, what's the next section? Okay, I'm going to make sure I do this at this aid station, blah, 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 get in and out. You know, you're kind of just doing that, take the rest. Anna jumped in the water, mm. yeah. <laughs> cooled off. Um, that's cool, like cool the core body temperature, core body temperature, yeah, because the next section actually is like it's like a lot of road and quite warm and you're out in the open. Uh, back then the course was on the road, not not this year, but um so yeah, it wasn't wasn't too bad that part. Um, boat ride done, um, and then onto the road section um, to Ruru Fukaitu, and um, yeah, saw you at saw you at Ruru Fukaitu. That again, that was about the fifty five k age station mark, eh? Yeah, even um, even though um, you know fifty k's into a miler is you know not that far, it's, it does feel like the first like significant sort of like milestone obviously i think it's partly because you know in an ultra there is a 50k um so yeah you sort of start to feel like you're getting into the day yeah. then like a, and it's like, like sort of 50 60k mark you're like oh yeah we're getting into it now yeah and, and if you've um you know it's kind of like maybe if some people have gone out a bit hard because oh, yeah. because like you know, it's it's like a bit of a classic thing. Like I'm going to get my fastest 50k in in the miler. I'm going to get my fastest 100k in the miler, and then I'm just going to leave the leave the last 60k's up to like you know just trudging really. But so that can happen. But I think like you didn't do that. You just kind of like I think running to heart rate and you know in in things like um yeah, yeah that at that stage like between Burrow and I've forgotten the name apart from O. 
Oh How, I think the Ocahel or Oh How, maybe the aid yeah. station was called then. It's like flat road. So you think that it's like, um, it, but it's flat road at like 12 o'clock in the, in the day. Yes. Um, so it's really good in for walking, actually. Yeah. Walking. Uh, yeah. And um, one of them, yeah, there was a slight uphill too. That's right. So from Rory Fukaitu to that next aid station, I think it was a seven kilometer trip to that next aid station. And that, yeah, it's just like this hill that was just like this, you know, it's just yeah. this tiny little uphill. You can almost not even see it. And um, with the naked eye, but it is, it's there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And yeah, like you said, it's like, far, it was like f- farm area out in the open. It's like 12, it's like that past lunchtime, hot in the road. And uh, yeah, so many people went too hard on that. Yeah. So many people went too hard on that. So yeah, I took some walk breaks on the flat through there. And um, yeah, and I always recommend that to like runners from Coach 2A, like in the yeah middle part of the days in like milers, like if it's hot, even on flat bits, like if there's long periods of flat bits, then um, yeah, you're just like breaking up that, that was those long flat running bits. And um, I found that it was a really smart thing for me to do like on those periods. Because um, even when I saw you, so I saw you at the next aid station, it was 60 odd Ks wasn't mm. it, back then, 62 or 63 Ks, I think it was. And that was before I go into the um, into the sort of northern Tarawera forest. Yeah, I was so hot compared to what I was seven k's earlier. <laughs> like when I saw you at River for guys who were at fifty five k's. Yeah, I think, it's, it I think it's fifty five to sixty two. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. When I saw you there, I was like, "Yeah, I'm so good, feeling good." And I'm um, seven k's later on that road section. I'm like, "Whew, that was quite hot." You came in sassy actually into that A station. <laughs> yeah. This was the first time that Chris was feeling not great. Um, and he like there's this photo actually. Yeah. I don't have it, but yeah. it's it's a famous photo that I've been around. It, I, it always gets shared from the archives. And it's actually Chris going, "What are you doing, Charlotte?" Yeah, I've got my I'm running into the aid station. I got my hands up. It's like, "What are you doing?" And I was just standing there looking at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, babe. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite funny. Um, yeah, so you would come out to the the aid station stuff was set up like you'd set up a little thing mm-hmm. inside for crewing, and um, but you'd walked out to the road, and um, but um, I was just running, approaching you, and you're just like, <laughs> 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 I'm like, where are we going? Yeah, <laughs> so it was like quite funny. Yes, um, but obviously you know, sixty three k's in, getting a bit tired, a uh, bit hot, and um, yeah, so came in, and um, yeah, I. I had, at the prior aid station at Rio Fukaitu, just to rewind this slightly, I had changed my shoes because I had randomly worn, and this is the sort of mistakes you can make, eh? Like, it's just so crazy. Like, uh... two weeks before my race, I get this idea that I need to be wearing, like, a certain pair of shoes, a road pair of shoes, because um, this big, the greatest obsession of Tara, Tarawera Ultramarathon is that people want to wear road shoes and um which is fine if you live in areas where there's trails like that and you train on trails like that and you run in road shoes all the time but if you're not and um then you're training in trail shoes then it makes sense to wear your trail shoes you know what mm. I mean? and so yep i had this idea that i'm gonna wear road shoes for the first part of the race and do a shoe change but um, guess what? Got blisters yeah. from these like shoes that I hadn't trained in or simulated stuff in or in, on any long stuff and got blisters. I never really get blisters. And so, yeah, I had to deal with that, change my shoes at Rio Fukaitu and um, then got to the next uh, aid station and had to do more stuff, you know, because I was like hot and wasn't going to see you for a long time. Yeah, I was like, um, when we were just talking before, I was like, um, yeah, what did you kind of yeah expect what is it to be expected like you know physically um you know sort of like that 50 60 k's in and um you know this could be like a good place for a shoe change whether it's from like a mistaken um pair of shoes um your sock change or a t-shirt change if you're like a heavy sweater Mm -hmm. i suppose like what i'm trying to say is that you like the 50 to 60 k's things is things can start happening you know maybe back at 30 k's you know, nothing's really happened. It's a cool part of the day. It's in the morning. It's only 30 Ks in. And then, but 50, 60 Ks, things can kind of start happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I think that's probably something that to be aware of. Like, it shouldn't be like a total hellhole. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Just little little things to solve. Yeah, like, 
yeah. And um, maybe you have like sensitive feet, and it's like you know that mm. kind of kind of a thing because all that kind of stuff, um, if you just leave it, could pay for it later. And so it's mm. kind of like that's a changeable thing because um, you are out there for a long time. It's not like you're out there for a typical like 50k training run where it doesn't mm. matter yeah, so much. You've got to keep going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The training run, the run's not finishing just a third of the way through. Yeah. You're just sitting Absolutely. down. You might, oh, and I think, I think you sat down at the 50k's obviously to change shoes. Mm. So that might be, you might not have sat down at the 30k's. Like this is when, um, you know, that minimizing that stoppage time can come in, like obviously by not sitting down. Um, Because if you're sitting down, that kind of implies that you're going to be having some sort of rest, whether it's like five minutes or or 20 minutes or or more than. Mm. Um, But, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, eh? Because at Faultline this year, at the 50-odd K mark, I was in and out in like two minutes, right? Yes, Uh, yes. I was just, everything was totally fine. Nothing, Nothing needed, just fill the bottles, do the whatever, get rid of my rubbish, that's it, out of there. Yeah, so it's quite a, quite a contrast, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose April and February, like, kind of could be a change in temperatures as well. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. Or it's or it's just growth in in your, which is probably more so. Yeah, I think it's more to do with that. Yeah, yeah, just better execution of, you know, you're just more familiar with what you're wearing and how to execute that you're running and that kind of thing. Not wearing new shoes. Not wearing new shoes. I mean, it's a no brainer, right? Yeah. And so yeah, at the sixty at O. How I think it was called. Sorry, it's not called that anymore. The aid station's not there anymore. Mike Jolly was there, and um, yeah, he came to the rescue actually because I was quite looking quite a bit hot then. Yeah, and um, he like sussed me out with some ice in my buff that yes. I had on, and that really helped. So yeah, that was cool. I, like had a buff full of ice as I was leaving um, that aid station. That really helped. I was just experience. observing this because I was just like. What's going on? How do I do this? I was just like trying to be helpful, I think, from memory. But I was taking taking it in for, you know, later dates. Um but yeah, it was it was a it was very helpful. Yeah, and that's a really good tip, like if it is a hot year, um at Tarueta for you Milo guys, um, is to yeah, an icy that's what we had, an icy a little chili bin with icy water in it and just a flannel. And that was really good for the age sessions where I was seeing you for crew, just to have that icy flannel for white wipe down you know it just cools the body temperature get that cold water on your mm. neck and that in your chest and yeah i found that really good yeah and i was just um just another question that just popped in my head was like um you know like 60 k's in was your nutrition going to plan or you just like um feeling like something different or were you drinking more liquids Do you remember that kind of stuff no i don't remember anything like that on that particular uh, race, I, I remember everything going fairly like normal, mm. like at that point. Yeah, unlike fault line this year where I went sort of off, off piece. Yeah, yeah, off piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for I don't know different reasons or whatever, but um, just adapted. But yeah, that um, for Tarawera was pretty. Yeah, didn't yeah I think on track with everything. I think so. Later in the next section, I probably started drinking more Coke and more like um, yeah, Mount, there was Mountain Dew and stuff like that. I started probably drinking more of that than I thought I might. That sort of mid afternoon, mid to late afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, when you leave that aid station, then it's the the next time I was seeing you was sixty k's later, right? Yeah. So I had to go from that Ohau station, 63Ks or whatever it is, to 22Ks, I think, what time it was then. And uh, it's a long way. It's like, you know, see you tonight. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. like, it's like mid-afternoon. And, um, you know, I'm not going to see you for like 60Ks. It's crazy. It's like pretty funny. And it's actually the same too. Um, I was looking at the, I was doing a, a one-off call with someone today, like discussing the um, the new course for this year. And, um, yeah, it's it's more or less the same, really. You're going from the runner has got to go from Ruri for Kaitu uh, all the way to Okataina. Um, there is the outlet bus thing, you know, that's so outlets 88 odd Ks, I think, this year. Um, and there is the bus in option for crew, but more often than not, um, based off previous years, that's often been canned, isn't it? The buses for the outlet because of fire risk and stuff like that. So uh, that was the case that year, it was a very hot, dry year. Remember, there was like a massive, oh, right, yeah. it was a hot summer and there was like heat wave coming into the race, even though race day itself was actually a little bit cooler. Right, yeah. 
that week in Rotorua, it was like 30 degree days. That's right. Like, well, it was like, man, this is going to be crazy. And so, yeah, they um, cancelled the buses to outlet. And that, that is often, that's um, happened many years, actually. And it's a very big mission if you want to get your crew in and out of outlet also. It's a big mission. Yeah, there's sort of like pros and cons of that kind of thing because by the time that Chris had left, like that 60Ks, I was pretty like tired. Yeah, the crew needs a break too, right? Yeah, and I, um, I went back to our accommodation and like had a nap and just like chilled out um, and got ready to, you know, come pace you. Um, but, yeah, it was also kind of like, it might, you know, it doesn't obviously take that long to have a nap and chill out, you know. And then by the next time I was like thinking about Chris and I remember – your um your chip had hadn't um, ah the timing things yeah hadn't elapsed yeah and oh, gone over oh, gone off, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I was like what's happened to Chris what's happened to Chris um so that can happen I suppose that could yeah. that, that's a really common thing that um you know there might be it doesn't pick up on every timing mat yeah and that that happens a lot doesn't it like so, yeah yeah yeah. With different races, different ultra races, sometimes uh, someone's bib is under their like shirt, or it gets stuck behind your um, hydration vest, or whatever, and it just doesn't get picked up on the timing mat that you go over for whatever reason. Mm. Uh, that can happen. Eh? So that, that's something to expect, especially you know, not so much as the runner, you won't, you'll be none the wiser, but um, to tell your uh, crew people that that can happen. Yeah. Um, and and I suppose this has been like alternative forms of communication come in handy, aka like your phone, um, and sending messages if you can to like your crew. Yeah, but that course, I remember I got a text, I got a message out to you, maybe somewhere from Outlet or something. Oh, yeah? Yeah, or um, possibly after that, somewhere around the 100Ks, I think I got a message out to you, um, perhaps, and there was like one bar of something. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it's quite a dead spot like mm -hmm. that. That sort of back end of that course, the course, um, you know, from that 60K mark um, coming right around to Okotaina, yeah, large patches of that. You're you're in the middle of, like, big just forestry. Yeah, you're a long way out from a, uh, yeah, yeah. From a cell tower. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no cell <laughs> towers now. Civilization. Yeah, yeah, you, you're, yeah, you're on the back end of the Mount Tarawera itself, aren't you? Um, yeah, so you're on the back. Yeah, so um, yeah, dead spots. Did I get a message to you? Do you remember? Maybe, yeah. I kind of maybe it came in. Yeah. Um, I do do remember some. I just remember. I think I got a message out. I remember just a bit in a bit longer than maybe I had thought or expected. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, I suppose like in this in this in this time of the race, like this is when it's also probably not good if you go out too hard because if you're in like a no man's land, you kind of want to have somewhat of your wits around you. Like so, you know, between the six that those two aid stations, obviously you're crossing into um the hundred k, and once maybe uh once you've done the hundred k's, then you're going into your longest run ever. Mm, you know, yeah. yeah, for a lot of people, mm. and so that you kind of you're kind of um, getting into the no man's territory or the unknown in terms of Ks and you don't have a crew person around you. You mm. don't have um, – so that can be like a bit of a challenging thing as well. I mean, you're, you might be experiencing – experiencing some um adverse things like maybe you finding it hard finding it hard to digest solid food and it's yeah because it can be like eve like well into the evening and night there depending yeah. on where, you, where you're at like you know coming around to that you know 90 100k mark outlet age station and that yeah you can be well into the evening there right? and night for yeah. some i suppose it's like when it's good to have like um sort of like liquid uh food options like the tailwinds and all like the coke and stuff from the uh, from the aid stations and mm. like chews as well like pure chew chews mm. those kind of foods are really good when you've got like a bit of like sensitive stomach going on um they're good as well um when when that's not the case but it is a good thing to do when you are um when you have that kind of going on yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and um, Outlet has drop bags. So this year also, Outlet has drop bags. That's the 8Ks this year. Um, but yeah, I, util I utilised drop bag at Outlet mm. that year. Yes. And you put some photos in there for me. I did. Charlotte put some photos, snuck some photos into my <laughs> drop bag. I just remember that now. We're talking little things. Huh? You can sneak some photos in your drop bag. Well, you your, tell your crew your person to sneak your purse. 
tell your crew person to sneak some photos of your children. And um, I think that is a thing, like, you know, a little yeah, note yeah, to yeah. Your, your partner or your children. Um, yeah. Just And I, I do also remember, like, around this time, I think that you'd had some nausea or your head. Oh, you'd, after that, yeah. Your yeah. head, you know, you looked at a photo of us and got naus- nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was after I looked at the photos and I got nauseous. Yeah, yeah. That's what did it. Everything was fine until then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could but, happen. Um, yeah, so outlet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess I just, should just mention just that period of, mm. you know, after that 63K mark. And I think, yeah, to outlet, I guess, is a good sort of, you know, that was, that was a marathon. That's right. I remember that. It was a 42Ks, basically. And that was just, and it's going to be the same for that whole section also. Uh, although different course, um, yeah, it's basically Forestry Road from what I understand with the new course um, this year. And it certainly was that year as well um, that I was in there. I just remember it was just you just forestry roads, just pine forest, <laughs> just like pine blocks as far as you could see, and just forestry roads. Getting through the case for, for a marathon. <laughs> And Only one way through. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know. Just like ticking off the Ks in the pine forest in the middle of nowhere on your own. Like, And you've got head aid stations. Like there was obviously other aid stations mm. on the way, a couple of others. I think there's, there's three. No, that's Humphreys was after outlet and that. But uh, yeah, there was three aid stations between Ruri for Kai 2. No, oh, between, uh, yeah, Ruri for Kai 2 and outlet. I think there was three aid stations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they were like the aid stations were like oasis, an oasis in the desert, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and those are those volunteers, yeah, man, they're like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that's it's epic. Yeah, and so we, when you get to those aid stations, it's like, oh man, nice to see you guys, because <laughs> yeah. the field's so spread out by then, and only the miler runners are on that section of the entire course as well. So you're not like uh, you haven't got the hundred, you haven't linked up with the hundred k course yet. Mm. So it's only the miler runners that are on that section, you know, on those on those trails and um you know 80 k's in everyone's just spread out you know and back then it was only a few hundred runners as well 400 runners i think it was 20. yeah i was gonna say like it's probably um you know there's probably maybe closer to 600. i reckon this year there might be six or seven hundred eh? which yeah, i yeah. suppose would make six, somewhat seven, of a difference six, but... seven eight hundred maybe okay well instead of when you was 400 that year and there's 800 this year so just you know there will be like it's double so yeah you might have yeah, the half might. the amount of time that you were alone you'll see a person yeah 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 you might find some running things yeah and you might want to talk now post when it's like 20 k and you didn't want to talk to anyone um so yeah but what i do remember distinct distinctively about this whole section that whole 42 k's on those forestry roads that was when i started overtaking people so that is when so this is like mid-afternoon late afternoon all that kind of stuff yeah i started just overtaking people um like consistently just and not fast or just oh there's someone up ahead or a couple of people up ahead Mm. i'd just slowly reel them in uh, overtake that person and next group up ahead you wouldn't you know i wouldn't see anyone for ages and then all of a sudden there's like oh someone there overtake them. Nice. and that's when like yeah it was after it was in there after that 60k mark you know in that in that forest that yeah that started that started to happen um yeah the folks that ran away from me like on the road block at Ruru for Kaitu, and i started like yeah overtaking them and so yeah that's what i remember about that section and i even remember seeing anna like briefly she oh, yeah. was still ahead of me she had gotten ahead on the road section again that's right um and i remember seeing her briefly way ahead mm. you know but i couldn't catch her at that at that stage um yeah so i remember seeing her there that was funny we must have passed her when like after akutaina no before before passed her at outlet oh okay yeah yeah um yeah passed her at the outlet aid station so yeah, nothing much else about that section really. Uh, and yeah, the outlet A station was the next um, main point. And I feel like outlet used to be at a hundred k's or hundred. Yeah, I think it used right. to be more. eh? like it says in this year's map, I was looking, um, that it's at eighty eight k's. I'm pretty sure. I have to double check that. Um, but um, I'm pretty sure outlet was 101 or 100 like I, feel I, like I, I would agree yeah yeah or 90 uh you know somewhere um, yeah so that's interesting I'm not sure how that works um but um yeah so you sort of i remember just sort of yeah man i've ticked off my 100k and i remember too 
I ran that 100k of the miler faster than my an hour faster than my hundred my entire hundred k mm -hmm. at Tarawera the year before. So that's how much like fitter and stronger I'd got like uh, in that year is that I had just aerobically ran or like miler pace cruised mm -hmm. um, that first hundred k faster than I ran my. 100k you know the year before so it was like a real cool i was like man cool and then so uh, i remember the, you know the head starting off i'm like you know start doing maths in the head it's like yeah man if i do like uh the next if i do this next 60 k's in 10 hours i'm going to do 22 hours or something like that ah you know? uh, yeah i kind of vaguely remember yeah, this yeah, kind yeah. of going on you sort of start doing the maths and mm. yeah i don't know i don't know if doing the maths is that helpful it sort of ultimately starts tying you out yeah, really yeah. and distracting you from your process i think uh, it's kind of too weird. I yeah, uh, I mean, doing maths in a miler, um, yeah. Leave up your pace. I was doing the maths for um, yeah. Kim actually because I was determined to get her under thirty hours, and I could I could fault line this year. That fault line, and um, I could I was doing the math, but I could do it because I hadn't. You were fresher. Yeah. I was fresher. Um, yeah, the runner doing maths like yeah at night in the miler is just like yeah yeah <laughs> a lot of brain try yeah 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 it's quite funny eh so yeah outlet. Um, yeah, saw Anna. I overtook Anna there, and um, she was doing stuff in the aid station. I had my drop bag. It uh, wasn't too long, sort of in and out. Got the bottles full. I remember there was this cool, yeah, there was like heaps of kids at that aid station. It was so cool. And this like young kid like crewed me at the aid station. It was so awesome. <laughs> and he, I was like sitting down, a little bit mm -hmm. like tired. And um, he was like, oh, do you need anything? And I'm like, yeah, man, can you fill my bottles up, please? <laughs> this little kid, like, crewed me, oh, brought cute. my bottles to me, you know, it was so cool. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, man, that was so cool. The group there, they were so awesome, like that community group that was there. Um, yeah, they were, they were awesome. Again, like, yeah, like an oasis in the desert, you know, it's like so glad to see them. Um, and then, so yeah, left there, and um, then yeah, it was that um, journey to Humphreys Aid Station at the time, and then on to uh, 120 odd, 122 came out Okotaina um, at the time. And um, yeah, then um, the mind is switched then to like the next goal was to see you guys, you know, and uh, pick up you, you know, yeah. to be the pacer. That's when you start. That's when I started thinking about like, okay, cool. That's my next goal mm -hmm. is to get there. It's, you know, you're, you're blocking out your, you know, you got your goals um, set out. And by then it was like evening time coming into the evening, like five, six o'clock or something like that. And um, yeah, I, I um, there was a technical section of the course that isn't there now for this year's one. Uh, that was on the, the Eastern Okotaina, I think was the technical mm -hmm. section on the way to Humphreys. And um, yeah, that was like about a, eight or 10k section and a lot of it yeah some of it's like quite technical and um yeah i was quite nauseous through that period that's where i got like a bout of nausea uh, through that period and um just had to sort of slow down for a while and um just let things kind of settle and not to like just force myself to run and, and whatever and um yeah just sort of settled and and then i uh, yeah sort of latched on to another runner and that's always a great tip as well if you're ever not feeling great it's sort of just to latch on to someone and be like hey how are you you know tell me all about you you know <laughs> get them talking and it uh, just sort of takes your mind off like where you're at um that kind of thing is a nice one and so yeah just yeah sort of latched on to this um runner and, and just had some like convos not even the convos even though but just that thing of like watching that person's feet in front of you mm. and just following them just getting on with it and um yeah I I found that really good through that period. Got to Humphreys, and uh, that was um, Ben Elton is at, at that aid station. Uh, so I think the Scouts community group was, you know, looking after that aid station like they had for many years. Uh, so, yeah, Ben was there. So it was cool, like, to see someone I knew from the local area. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was about 100-odd Ks, I think, you or 112-odd Ks into the race. And uh, I went to the toilet there. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> Yeah, needed a toilet stop there. That was a that was a big job that one. <laughs> nice. After being running 112 k's or something, yeah. So I had to go to the loo there, and um, and that made me feel better actually. I bet it did. Yeah, I started mm -hmm. to like feel better then after going to the loo, and um, Ben gave me like there was some like sandwiches there, and I like tried it. I was just like, oh yeah, it was like all dry in my mouth. I'm like, nah. 
can't do that. Um, yeah, but I do remember having something at that A station. I can't quite remember what it was. I think it might have been a bit of fruit or something. And that just kind of like changed things a little bit for me. And um, yeah, and started feeling better once I left that A station. Uh, mm -hmm. The nausea had well and truly passed. You know, just those few things like the interaction with Ben, going to the loo, um, having something different in the mouth. Like it was just enough to like flick the um, switch, if you like. And then obviously just being closer to like seeing you guys. Like I think really helped, and um, so yeah, the that period from Humphreys to Okataina was like one of those sort of uneventful like periods. I just remember kind of ticking it away quite well and getting through it, and um, then got to Okataina. So you guys, first time in sixty odd k's, yeah, right? sixty sixty five k's, and um, yeah, saw you guys, and it was just after dark, wasn't it? For a little bit after that, so maybe nine. I think nine, it was like eight thirty, yeah, that you oh, got right. okay, got got there. So um, yeah, you got to yeah, we were waiting there for you. Excited to see you. We had got your pizza, so like um, being like eight thirty, um, you know, it's like dinner time, <laughs> dinner time in the run world. Um, so we got that for you, and um, yeah, it was also. I think this is another just general um tip as well. Like it's good to plan out key A stations where you're going to spend a little bit longer mm. um you know so maybe it's like that 55 or 50 k's is one and then sort of like that yeah that 120 -ish, 20 ish yeah. when you pick up your pace there could and be another back. like yeah because you guys weren't really prepared for my arrival sort of thing eh? you were you guys were waiting for me <laughs> <laughs> but not really prepared to yeah but yeah. that's yeah in my defense, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you were ready to run and pace. Yeah. Um, but I guess, like, you don't really know, do you, how your runner is when they come in as well. And so, yeah, it's, yeah, it was a tricky one. We're all, you know, first time Milo. Let's just rewind the clock and just go back to that yeah. we had been together for like six months and prior to meeting you, I had no idea what an ultra was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you guys were there, yeah. And so I had to like get the, yeah, we got the pizza into the little Ziploc bags and yeah, got them packed. And I did like a full change of everything there. Yeah, I changed my shirt, changed my like socks or whatever there. Yeah. Had some mouthwash. I had some mouthwash, yeah. And this, that is, I did that again at Faultline 2 at 100Ks. I did the old mouthwash thing, which I find is really good. Yeah. Um, at around about then. Um, so yeah, did a, did a full pit stop, basically, you would say, full restock. You probably spent like 20 minutes there. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a good 15 to 20 minutes, um, that one, eh? And you still had your cinnamon scroll in your back. But by now, by then, you had your cinnamon scroll in your back. Yeah. So you didn't change your shorts because we didn't know about the cinnamon scroll. But um, it was there. <laughs> cinnamon scroll was there. Um, but, yeah. and then you'd, um, you know, you pack your pack full of things and got your, you would have had your head torch on by then right oh yeah yeah so just, just yeah like... yeah yeah no, full pit stop uh, and then we were on our way eh? Hey? you know on our way into the night and i was actually really good then wasn't i yes probably because you had me yeah i had one of my <laughs> uh coffee drinks there and um still not sold on the coffee drinks i don't know if they're a good thing or a bad thing they make you feel amazingly good <laughs> At the time of having them, um, but they can kind of uh, there's a there's a downside to them. Yeah, I think you ended up in the um, bushes. Yeah, later on, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. I mean, it, it was 17 k's um, from memory, wasn't it? From Okataina Aid Station to Miller, I think back then 16, yes, 17. Yes, eh? that's right. Yeah, it's, it's a good good old hike. Can't have an aid station on there. Um, somehow this year it's only 15. Um, so oh. I, don't, I don't know how that works, but. Uh, I was actually slightly shorter from the education centre where the station is now. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that tr – oh, I think 15 and a half. So, yeah, could be, yeah. It's, uh, um, but, yeah, I think I remember feeling – how was I through that period? I kind of remember feeling all right. Yeah, so I suppose um, – yeah, I think you were right. And we, you were passing quite a lot of people. And by now you're getting – And in the 100 k too. Yes, I was going to yeah, say that. Yeah, so this was quite an interesting period because the 100Ks, um, these are like the 
rear pack 100Ks. Mm. And so they've been out for also for a long time and they're in all sorts of shapes and conditions, like delirious. Yeah, sitting at the side of the trail. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of like, um, yeah, just all sorts going on on that trail. I remember there was a marshal out there, eh, like on that section of the course and it just felt like in the middle of nowhere. I was like, oh, there's a marshal. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, runners, yeah sitting at the side of the trail, all that kind of stuff, eh? Questioning their life choices. Yeah, yeah. Stag- yeah, some people staggering around kind of thing. Talking to things. Yeah, like... I, I don't remember seeing that. Do you? Uh, yeah, oh, I do. Really? Oh, there was? Oh, yeah. yeah, there was, like, one in particular, and I can't, Im- I can't remember exactly where it was, but he was almost being, like, um, yeah, led by the marshal to... Oh, yeah. I don't know if he finished or... Probably dropped, yeah. Dropped, but he was in a really bad state. That's right. And it was... Um, I think it's just... It's just mm. part, of, part can, of the craziness. Can happen. Can happen. Um, but anyway, little Chrissy boy yeah, was we getting, were going all right. Yeah. I do remember struggling toward getting towards Miller, like that end, the last few kilometres of that 17K block. I do remember just being mm. like, oh, man, when are we getting to this aid station, man? It is a long little stretch, that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do remember, like, yeah, by then you're, like, really sort of feeling the legs and stuff like that. And so that must be 130, 135Ks in. Yeah, I was like feeling the legs uh, and that. But I was waiting to get to Miller, wanting to get to Miller. And it was the next, you know, you're breaking it all down to small chunks. And, uh, yeah, we were still overtaking people all through this, um, all through this period as well. And then, um, yeah, got to Miller in and out, not too long there, eh? We were kind of focused. I think we just focused on getting to Blue Lake, really. It was the next time we were going to see Ryan. And, um, (laughs) yeah, just kind of knew that it felt, it feels in your mind that that section between Miller and Blue Lake is fairly quick because you've kind of got road down, you know, it's road down from Miller down to Boys Beach and it's like flat boardwalks um and then you do have like the technical tenants trail which is only a couple of k's of technical trail k and a half two k's um and then you have but then you got to go around blue lake actually so you come out of tenants trail and it's uh, you can see the age station right there like you can just take a shortcut mm. it's right there but you've got to go five kilometers uh pretty much around blue lake to get to there that's a bit of a tough one, that one. <laughs> I must say, like, um, yeah, I remember looking at you in Tenant's track and I, like, suddenly kind of sort of thought that you were, like, a little bit tired. Like, um, yeah, you just, yeah. you just, you, you physically started looking a little bit tired. Um, not, like, in a bad way, but just in the fact that you've yeah. been running for so long. So it must be 140 um, Ks or something. Yeah. So I suppose that can kind of start coming in, like, your... The tired, the tiredness is probably probably set in whether you're, um, you know, if you're around that kind of like twenty four hour kind of time, um, yeah, can start kicking in here. Mm. And I remember, like, I think I even said it to you then. I was like, man, I feel like stick man, you know. Yes, like, you kind of look like it too. Tenants Trail is yes. like the, uh, you know, there's just the Rudy, the Rudy mm. um, technical um, thing, and um, yeah, it was just like stick man <laughs> trying to go over the roots. You know, yeah, really yeah, funny. and was... so. I kind of struggled through that section a little bit, mm. but still moving forward. And um, then we got to the end of Tenants and um, I like stopped and had this like little stretch or kind of like crouched down a bit to like stretch my legs kind of thing. And uh, there was a marshal there, hey, it's coming out of Tenants. And she was mm. like, oh, are you all right? You know, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm all good. Just having a, you know, stretch. And then I had this gel. Oh, yes. Which was like this caffeine gel. Yeah. That was a, I don't know if that was the mistake or what I had 30 <laughs> minutes later was the mistake. <laughs> but, or whether it was the coffee mocha drink that I had way back. It, yeah, things were compounding, I guess. Mm. Yeah, and I guess, you know, your stomach can start turning. But anyway, I had this gel and I actually felt amazing going around Blue Lake. I came, uh, I came yeah, back to life, I remember? remember that, yeah. I think I had the gel in a few, couple of periods going around the first part of the lake. And, um, and uh, yeah, we really overtook a lot of people going around the lake mm-hmm. there, and um, both in the hundred k and in the miler. Yeah, I was like charging coming into Blue Lake. Eh? By mm-hmm. the time that gel had gone down, the caffeine was flowing. Mm-hmm. You know, the carbs were flowing, and um, then yeah, charging into Blue Lake. I, am, I even want to say that I felt. I feel like I even ran up <laughs> that little hill going to the station. 
I feel like I even ran up it. That's how you know, good I was feeling. Yeah. Maybe I didn't know, but um, yeah, know. that's how good I was feeling. And um, so, yeah, probably overreached, I think. Like, just went a bit too hard on that little section too, but overexcited mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, had this experience in other races too. And um, where you're still far from the finish, really, although you are, it's close, but it's far. And just getting a bit overexcited, overreaching a little bit, coming into a key point of the race. And, um, but anyway, felt good coming into the A station. Ryan was there, and um, and then we didn't spend too long. We were having some headlamp troubles. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were swapping the headlamp, and we're having headlamp. I, I always seem to have headlamp troubles. <laughs> I'm going to buy a new headlamp. We're going to buy an A up. Yes, this season. Let you know how that goes. Yes, and um, yeah, invest in our own lamp. Um, that works really well. And um, yeah, I was having headlamp things, swapped it around and um, on our way, but I made a fueling error there. I had some chocolate milk. Oh, yes, you did. Was that a caffeinated one? No, I think it was like a Poo Hoy chocolate yeah, milk. Yeah, it was a Poo Hoy chocolate milk. Oh, it might have been caffeinated. I think it was the caffeinated yes, one. Yes, it so, was. So yeah, it was a big mistake on top of that caffeinated gel. <laughs> it just had like 30 minutes before. Yeah, you know, on top of everything, you know, it's sort of, you know, the accumulation of like just the, the wrong stuff. And probably along the way, of course, I probably had some Coke in there and probably had Tailwind oh my in God. there. And, and there was pizza. Yeah. You know, it was all stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, had a bit of that and um, left Blue Lake, still feeling good at that point. Um, but, um, and then overtook another Rotorua local, Darford. Yes, I was just going to say. Um, and I was like, oh man, we're going to beat Darford. And I was like, oh, cool. And because um, I know he had done something like 22-ish hours the previous year. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, cool. I'm gonna, you know. yeah, so yeah. I got a bit too over, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, left there. And um, yeah, I think we were all right for a little bit, but then just started to feel rough a couple of kilometers down the road. Oh. Two or three Ks, do you remember? Vaguely, yeah. And that was the start of my uh, famous story of like ending up in the bushes. <laughs> and Duff had actually run past. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> walked. <laughs> That's how slow I got. <laughs> David and Mike Leopard just walked past talking and yarning and I was in the bushes with my pants around my ankles, not sure not sure what end things are gonna come out. And I'm like hiding and I'm like, Oh, turn the headlamp off and like they're walking past. I'm like, Hey. Yeah. And I'm just like uh, standing on the side of the, side uh, yeah. of the trial, like, what yeah. do I do? Did they say anything to you? I can't remember. I don't think yeah. so. I think they were they were actually um they were getting it done. Like they were Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were. Yeah. We're, we're, we're walking with purpose. Yeah, Dufford had a good resurgence there towards yeah. the end and finished strong. Yeah, yeah. and But, again, once I had done that. <laughs> the, key, the key to feeling better. Yeah, yeah. Once I had released what I needed to release, I um, felt a lot better and um, came to life again, didn't I, actually? And so by then we were nearing Tokarangi Pa, which is like that last little steep bit just before you start coming down into the Redwoods. Um, which is like, you know, that sort of 12 Ks up from the finish. And so, yeah, started to come good again. And um, used to have the stairs going down into the Redwoods. They don't have that anymore, but the stairs, the big stairs. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, you know, 155, 160-odd Ks. It was 160-odd Ks into the race because I ended up clocking 169. Uh, So it was 150 Ks or something like that coming down those stairs and you're just like, oh, my God. You know, you hear the stories of people walking backwards down those stairs. Oh, you know, yeah. Because they were the big thing. They, yeah. They've taken them out of the, yes, of the course now. Yes, but, yes. Um, yeah, that was that was all right. We got we, we got all that done. I, I think I do remember making audible noises going down those stairs. Like, yeah. Just like, oh, God. You know. But still moving forward. Still moving forward. Always looking to move forward. I think one of your little things that you were sort of struggling with in this patch was, like, you had – started like cramping or something a little bit because you were wanting salt taps oh yeah um a little bit so i suppose that was like a, the next little mm. little problem but i mean you stretching on the the stairs actually going up to the tank um oh yeah quite a bit yeah, yeah. 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 and then you found one you found a salt tab and it, it made a lot of difference oh yeah they like slipped in my and this is the sort of stuff that happens when you're fatigued you know yeah. you're thinking straight and things are like fall, you know falling into pockets and hiding things you're putting shit places 
Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yes, I found a salt egg. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think it made a bit of difference. Yeah, yeah. I think that did help mm. um, on my way again. Yeah. So, yeah, Redwood Age Station, I was feeling good then. I was feeling good by then. Keen to get it done. Saw some Rotorua locals there. Will was there. Uh, and Louise was there because they were waiting for Anna too, right? Ah, yeah. Um, and because we, we didn't know where Anna was at that point. Um, not far behind me, it turns out. Yeah, yeah, she's <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I was like, you know, because me and Anna kind of had this, like, we trained together and we're like, yeah, we're pretty similar. It's going to be interesting what happens on race day. So I was quite motivated to keep, sure. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, we better keep moving. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anna might chase us down on the flat, you know, on the flat runnable stuff, which right. we were, she's strong. I was like, okay, let's keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep moving. She's going to, uh, like, she's going to chase us down. <laughs> and uh, so we kept moving. And, um, yeah, it's just that five to seven K or six odd K flat section um, from, because the Redwoods age station used to be a little bit closer. It used to be on the other side. And um, yeah, um, what was that last patch like? Emotional? No. Um... <laughs> what was that for you probably? Yeah. yeah, there was a few, there was a few patches. Like there was, I remember like looking at you when you were running around the blue lake and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, just all sorts of like loving, loving emotions and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm seeing you do that, you know, and it's like this person, this person um, is doing this, you know, like. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's you know, right, yes. You're kind of like watching this person do a mile, you know. and Because mm, um, the unknown's stripped out of it by then. Yeah. We know we're going to make it. Yeah. Yeah, stage. I think, yeah, yeah, I kind of had started getting that um, before Blue Lake. Yeah, that's I pretty guess. cool when that happens. Yeah. When you know you're going to do it. And then I think just obviously in that last 7K, it's like it keep that, probably that emotion keeps ramping up. Um, and yeah, and then like, um, yeah, we definitely had headlamp uh, issues at this point. Mm. I was using my phone. <laughs> yeah, you were using a phone and I think my headlamp had gone out or was it working? I don't know. I don't know. I like, batteries. Yeah. Or maybe I had switched to this spare headlamp, which was, you know, it's like a real crap one. At least it was going. You know, which, you know, funny story, I ended up using that same one and fault line again as my emergency backup and had to use it again. Oh well. But did the job again, once again. The shitty cheap headlamp saved my <laughs> saved the day again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had the phone, I had my my crappy headlamp and um yeah, getting it done that last period. Yeah. And, and you feel like I remember I remember running that section, you just feel like you're flying you're not. <laughs> you look at the you look at the data later and it was like I don't know, six thirty pace or something. Yeah. But you feel like recovery like, speed. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, cruisy, um, but at the time you feel like that six thirty is you feel like you're going like four thirties, you know, I can imagine. or a five minute like tempo, like marathon pace or something. Yeah, it mm. felt, felt like you're going quite fast, um, or my fast, and um, but no, six thirty maxing out. <laughs> well, it's pretty just, impressive still. Like yeah. you know, you're just moving your body, you're just moving your legs the best you can. Like metrics don't matter, obviously mm. by that point, and you're just you know you're just moving the best you can forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it was the finish. Yeah, yeah, the finish. Yeah. I think I was more emotional than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, yeah, it was cool to get it done. My dad was there. We had woken him up, kind of forced him to come down and watch. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so we only got him to come to the finish line in the end. Mm -hmm. It was just too much of a thing. And um, yeah, so that was um, cool. They were there in the middle of the night, like, like four o'clock in the morning, ten to four in the morning. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool and finishing finishing up um, yeah it was like a real surreal yeah like even talking about it now it's just like a real surreal kind of like moment you know where you're just you're just this thing that you've like you know because you're not just it's not just the training block you know you've dreamed about doing this thing for a couple of few years you mm -hmm. know you, you built up you've had the idea and then you've like trained for your first 100k and then you've lined up the miler the following year and so it's a long it's a long journey you know to get there eh? for your first miler and um, yeah, it's not just the block of 12 weeks or whatever of event specific stuff before the event, you know, it's the whole lead up. Yeah, yeah just a real, um, yeah, surreal experience. And choosing the toki, you know, is a real special thing too. And yeah, choosing that and um, was really um, awesome too. And um, just getting it done. My mate Ian was there, he was volunteering mm. on the finish line at the time so like seeing someone you know at the finish line really cool as well and um yeah really cool eh? yeah done the end 
Yeah, and then, and then it's like really important that um, you get your runner like home actually because you like yeah you got really cold. Yeah, the yeah, and this often happens. The runners start like shivering and whatever. Yeah. Like after that sort of you know it could be fifteen or twenty minutes later. So we actually did stay there for a while, didn't we? I got changed, um, and then so I got cleared with medical got changed and then we there was a out, outdoor heater on the finish line um thing and then we went and stood there for a while didn't we because i think we knew anna was coming yeah and so we waited for anna and she wasn't far behind and um so that was cool we saw anna come in and uh, we saw her yeah watched her give her because she it was her second time doing the tarawera Mila, and so she had her toki on from her previous year and she took that one off and gave it to her mum mm. and then got the new one got presented with her new one you know and that was pretty special because nice. anna's mum was not with us now so that was a special thing for her you know uh and that and to watch as well <laughs> <laughs> getting emotional it's an emotional thing eh? yeah, yeah. An emotional thing yeah yeah, seeing people yeah do this thing is amazing, and being part of their journey, eh? being part of their mile journeys, and um, yeah, I just remember, yeah, and I think at the time, like finishing, I'm just like, yeah, cool, done that, because you just in the moment, but yeah, it wasn't until like you know weeks, a couple of weeks later, you're just like, man, I actually had a really good run, eh? <laughs> you really did. Yeah, first you miler really and going sub twenty four, and we were runner of my like type, and um. Yeah, it's like really cool, like to tick that off, eh? You know, and um, I think for me as well, it was cool because I hadn't after that first miler and my second miler, which was this year, years later. Yeah, yeah. Then the following year, I sort of started having a few autoimmune health problems, like after the miler, and uh, not because of the miler, but you know, all sorts of stuff. It's a whole other story. And um, yeah, yeah. And then yeah going back to fault line this year and going sub 24 again it was actually really special actually um like nice. coming back mm-hmm. from that thing of like not it was a stage there where we thought I'd never do anything yeah yeah, yeah like 2022 and stuff 20 yeah 2 and 3 and and stuff like that mm-hmm. I was like uh not doing well yeah it was that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And we were like man I don't think I'm going to be able to even train and run again mm, yeah um, yeah and you're like doing coaching for your full time profession, yeah. helping people with there, and you're like you're not even able to train yourself. It was like, man, this is not good for my, this is not good for my mental health, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. It was a bit of an imposter syndrome. Yeah, but um, so it was very satisfying to be able to go back this year at Faultline and yeah, knock off that mile and to do another sub twenty four. That wasn't just a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's see what to do this year. Yeah. Have another go. Awesome. Have another go. So that's about it. This has been a way longer podcast than we – this is our longest podcast we've ever done. I hope we haven't bored you to death. This will be a great podcast to listen to on a run, actually. No need to watch us. Yes. <laughs> a great one to listen to while you're out on a long run. Thank you to all our CMF Run Club members um, and our one-on-one coach runners for your support. Um, without you guys – we couldn't make content like this. And so thank you so much for your support, your ongoing support. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll put all our links below if you want to know more about us or you want help with your running or you want to join CMF Run Club. We'll put those links below. And we'll catch you on the next Tarawera podcast. Actually, next week we're probably going to do one about zones, aren't we? Mm. Next week we're going to do another one about setting your own heart rate zones and that kind of thing because there was a lot of questions about that um, recently. So we'll cover that one off in the next one. Catch you then. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.